Hello. My name is Dr. Ima Asonye, and I'm presenting this afternoon with um, Anirfan Aban Daniel. And the topic of our presentation is gestures in numerals in three indigenous Nigerian sign languages. Um, we are going to walk you through how gestures work in the three indigenous sign languages that um, amongst the um, other sign languages that we've been studying. Uh, sign languages um, or sign language studies have witnessed a cycle over the years. Scholars have invested an increased interest in finding the relationship between gestures and sign languages since the beginning of the study of sign languages. Um, so this quest to find and establish the relationship between gesture and sign languages have been in the front stage of sign language studies over the period of time. And sign languages uh, were earlier considered as gestures. You know, across um, the world, sign languages were looked upon as gestures until the study um, of sign languages start to emerge as we have it today. Um, so scholars such as Ocrent, 2002, Kenden, 2004, Baker and Wolf, McNeil, Gordon Middle, all of these scholars have investigated the relationship between gestures and signed and spoken languages too. There's a whole lot of other scholars whose interests over the time have leaned towards finding the work that gestures do in sign languages vis-a-vis -vis in spoken languages. So looking at um, the Nigerian sign language situation, um, our studies have revealed that we have two varieties of Nigerian sign languages. The first one, the indigenous Nigerian sign languages and the conventional school sign language. And um, this is according to um, Asonye, Ima Asonye and Edward. So the school sign languages, um, as we refer to them, um, they are conventional school or forum-based sign languages. And they are largely a product of deaf education as was introduced in Nigeria or rather uh, strengthened in Nigeria by Dr. Andrew Foster. And these sign language, sign language varieties um, constitute the sign English syntactic structure and the ASL based vocabulary with a mixture of the local vocabulary. So this is a sign language variety that is largely used in the urban areas and by most deaf individuals with basic formal education. So several views exist among Nigerian deaf signers on the status of this sign language that we are talking about. Um, as several deaf signers regard this variety as American sign language, Others see it as Nigerian sign language. And um, this is an ongoing um, debate among you know, deaf people. So sign language scholars um, such as NIST 2010 have as well referred to this variety as a dialect of American sign language. So this variety of sign language is distinguished from the indigenous Nigerian sign languages. Um, the indigenous Nigerian sign languages are the varieties that are organically developed um, sign languages, which develop in the deaf communities. They are used mostly by deaf people in the rural areas uh, with little or no formal education. Many of the um, indigenous Nigerian sign languages were developed and were in use in pre-colonial times. Um, the work of Miles 20, 2004 has gone a long way in giving us some missing pieces of evidence um, that prove that indigenous Nigerian sign languages are among the older or oldest you know, um, sign languages that exist in Africa 
and uh, um, some of which we are considered as developed. And this uh, variety also represents the cultural identities of the deaf people. And they are displaced, they are being displaced by the school sign language, um, which we also consider them as being grossly endangered by the virtue of our studies. All right, let us look at um, gestures in indigenous Nigerian sign languages and um, the, the roles they play. Um, according to Hoyting and Slobin 2007, um, they observe that um, there is a continuum from gesture to sign in the development of sign languages in both historical and ontogenetic time frames. Historically, gestures, gesture is considered to develop into signs and sign languages as lexicon develop into grammar in spoken languages. And we can't agree more with this um, statement because um, our study in the indigenous um, deaf communities have um, shown us largely how much the gestures can be found. And going by the study that part of which we are um, describing here today, uh, we, we will understand that there is a kind of um, consistency in this, the gestures forming part of the signing system of, of, of the community. In the three indigenous Nigerian sign languages considered in this work, gestures are used as they are also observed in other natural sign languages around the world. So in most um, indigenous sign, uh, languages, gestures and grammar have important roles in expressing meaning according to Hoyton and Slobin. This significance of gesture and grammar is observed in the counting system of the three indigenous Nigerian sign languages that we are discussing today. So the first we are gonna be um, looking at is the accurate sign language. Accurate sign language that we are notifying, identifying here with us, um, AKSL, um, it, it is not studied by us. So we identified this uh, deaf community um, uh, as was studied by Oria 2013. But Oria did not mention the particular deaf community that he studied. So we are going to use this um, deaf community as a check uh, for the analysis that we are going to give to the other two sign language uh, varieties that we are presenting. So in accurate deaf community, according to Oria's work, um, many deaf people live uh, and work in Akure. A lot of uh, them are bilinguals and they are fluent in their indigenous or home signs. Um, so uh, just for the sake of geographical notation, um, Akure deaf community is in Ondo state in the Western part of Nigeria. And um, the primary spoken language in that community is Yoruba. The next sign language variety we are discussing today is um, Ipokun sign language, which we identify as IBSL. Um, Ipoku sign language is signed in Ipoku village in Opokun local government in Oshun State, Nigeria. This village has an estimated population of over 200 deaf um, signers, some of whom are bilingual, but majority of whom are not very literate in the formal education. The Ibokun uh, people are mostly uh, farmers who specialize in growing uh, food crops such as yam, cassava, maize, rice, and so on. And they also grow uh, cash crops such as cocoa, kola nuts, etc. Yoruba and Ijesha are the primary uh, spoken languages in this village. Um, preliminary signed language data that have been collected from this um, community were collected by um, one of our volunteers, Dr. A, who is deaf, and Rebecca, who is hearing, both of whom have done this on 
you know, two occasions of visit in, the, in that community. The next um, sign language variety we are presenting today is um, the one we uh, call Mogajingari um, Sign Language, MGSL. Mogajingari Sign Language is an indigenous sign language of the deaf people of Gaduna occupying the Mogajingari region in Gaduna State, Nigeria. Mogajingari is just a region in the northern part of Kaduna where the Mogajingari Sign Language was documented. Uh, when we arrived, we um, referred to the variety of the sign language we are collecting with the name of the area where the um, documentation was done, just to make sure that we have a specific identification for that language variety. The um, language consultant that worked with us in this uh, work, some of them came from Zaria local government area in Kaduna and uh, in it, from its environs, um, they live in the Mogajingari area, and that is how we derived the name Mogajingari. The sign language used in that region by the language consultant is the same, though with some slight variations because of where the different people came from. So there is, there were some, you know, signing varieties for those who came from Kano's area and all that. So, and then the sign language uh, that system used there um, are used by both old and young, and Hausa is the primary spoken language in that area. So let's look at a video where a woman is signing. So the video you watched shows a signer signing the words alligator, vulture, and frog demonstratively and iconically. An alligator she signed by using a large signing space to demonstrate the widely open mouth of alligator while catching a prey. This is to a very large extent gestural or demonstrative and also iconic. Vulture is signed generally as a bird by demonstrating the bird flying away and to avoid being caught by humans. And the signer emphasizes the act of attempting to catch and flying away. That is um, the two um, main, uh, will I say, phrases that combined to make that signing. Frog is signed by simply employing a body of a body movement that indicates the hopping of a frog with an accompanying froggy sound. All right, so let's look at gestures in the numerous of indigenous sign languages. So Oria is the first work that is known to us that describes indigenous sign languages in uh, gestures in numerous. And Orie describes how conventional gestures used by both deaf and hearing in a Yoruba community evolved into the signing system of the deaf. Although Orie um, identifies this deaf community in Akure, Yoruba land, it is no doubt that the work that you know, he describes um, it is part of a feature that potentially cuts across other indigenous sign languages. So this is partly because, according to NIS 2010, indigenous African sign languages are known to evolve outside of um, the context of deaf education and because deaf people are part of the larger hearing community, as we have always said. So let's look at some gestural signs. We should start from here.
So those are videos showing numerous in the different um, sign language systems that we have collected. Um, so right now we're gonna be looking at um, the conventional counting and signing numerals, um, trying to look at the distinguishing factors. Number one, there is finger counting. And according to our views, fingers appear to be the oldest numerical symbols in most uh, Africans, African languages and cultures. However, finger counting varies with different cultures and languages. That is that uh, many Nigerian cultures count fingers and numerals on the fingers and toes and convention. That is a convention that may be as old as the um, languages themselves. So from our observation, counting often begins with either of the two fingers, the index or the pinky finger. Counting usually um, revolves around all the fingers and sometimes extended to the toes. This current study supports Oriel's 2013 view that indigenous sign languages adopt the counting uh, conventions of their immediate community and allow for possible modification over a period of time um, of use. Uh, the factors that bring the modification may include possible contacts with other signed or spoken languages of the neighboring communities. Um, however, um, how these modifications are done over time have hardly been investigated. Now, let's look at distinctive features that we um, observe in the um, signing of numerals. We observe four major distinctive features in, in this study. One, the dominant fingers, two, the hand shapes, three, the palm orientations, and four, palms versus fingers. Looking at the dominant fingers, um, we mentioned earlier that the use of the index finger and pinky fingers are most often as initializers of the numerical counts. From the video and other data we have collected, the index finger and the pinky finger are dominant in signing numerals in mortgaging Gary sign language and other varieties of Hausa sign language. While the index finger begins the counting from the number one, on one hand, the pinky finger begins the counting on the other hand for the number six. And after every five and uh, five on the other hand. So while the number six, 16, 26 ETC are counted on the pinky finger, the number one, 11, 21, 31 are counted on the index finger. However, there seems to be um, the use of dominant finger um, you know, in a varied way in the, in, in the communities. Unlike the Akure sign language, Ibuku sign language appears to interchange the index and pinky fingers. Pinky fingers for six, pinky finger plus big toe for 16 in ETC. Um, index finger for one, 11. In Akure sign language, according to Ori, um, so Ori distinguishes between the use of pinky in signed numerals and in conventional gestured numerals. While the pinky is bent for the number one and six, etc., the gestured numerals, um, it stands while other fingers are bent in the signed numerals. That is, if you want to look at it morphologically, uh, sorry, phonologically, you look at gestured numerals plus pinky plus bent while sign numerals plus pinky minus bent. The second um, um, distinctive feature we want to look at is palm orientation and hand shapes. Hand shapes and palm orientation are prominent distinctive features in numerals in three sign languages that we studied. In the three sign uh, language varieties, the counting of fives and tens are outstanding and distinctive in hand shapes and palm orientation. The Grappolo or zero hand shape, according to Kingdon 2004, and the B hand shapes and the closed fist hand for gesture numerous are the distinctive hands for fives and tens. Accurate sign language, um, it, you will have the plus B hand, plus open palm, plus spread, plus front. In Iboku sign language, you will have plus B hand, plus open, plus front 
while in mortgaging there is sign language, you have plus grapolo, plus close, and minus front. So notice the dynamics in the signing varieties that are displayed on these pictures. The five and 10 in Akure sign language, the five in Ipoku, the 10 in Mogjingere, and also the gestured um, numeral counting in Akure sign language for five and 10. The next, which is the last, um, palm versus fingers. Usually the fingers are used for counting across cultures and languages, spoken and signed. However, in these three signing systems, the palm seems to play a significant role in counting. Also, especially the fives and tens. While the fingers actively involved in counting the fives and tens in mortgaging Gary sign language and the related sign languages used in Northern Nigeria, the palms are actively involved in signing same numbers in Iboku sign language and Akure sign language. So in Ibokun sign language, the palms join with the toes to count from 15 up, while in Mugijingeri, all, sound, all counting is signed on the fingers. So having looked at this uh, study, we are concluding this way. One, gestures are well accounted for in numerous and by extension, an integral part of the indigenous sign languages especially those that we have been studying. Despite the existing scholarly works on gestures in sign languages, the significance of gestures in indigenous sign languages have hardly uh, been studied. And uh, we recommend that such studies you know, be taken, um, undertaken by you know, scholars of interest. Documentations of indigenous um, sign languages should take uh, these gesture significance into consideration and ensure to accommodate them. So whenever anybody wants to document indigenous sign languages, maybe the ones who are still working on today, they should account for, you know, gestures or rather expect to account for gestures. And finally, uh, deaf signers should recognize that gestures enrich their indigenous sign languages like they do in spoken languages. They don't make the languages local. Gestures don't make the languages local. They are part and parcel of the sign languages. Thank you for listening.